touching that emotion you were feeling it. I just got into a fight earlier today with a consult client. We've been fighting for a few uh, months here. And I think we had a breakthrough today. Sometimes I think I'm a, I am an entrepreneur's psychologist. It was a, it's a she. And uh, the breakthrough was about mental money. I'll get into the mental aspect after I tell you what went down with this. She's been struggling to break 350,000 gross sales per year. Just really, really struggling. Out of that, she doesn't take <clears throat> she doesn't take it home as much as you would think. I mean, really, uh, when she came on, I knew there was a lot of stuff wrong and you know, we was able to increase her take home pay 15% the last few months. And we've hit another ceiling. And it just didn't make sense to me because the business model she have is it, sound. The sound is just like there's something really wrong. And we hit on it. She doesn't think that she's worth six figures take home pay. So, no, it sounds crazy. No, it sounds strange. But internally, she doesn't think that she's worth that kind of money. Therefore, <clears throat> the money's not coming into her life. She is actually pushing money away. And I told her that today. I said, you're actually pushing money away. And I am not, I am not the friendly consultant. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And I said, you know what? You don't value your fucking self. And we, you know, and once again, I, I tell you, I, I, I was, so many times I think I'm going to get fired and I, it doesn't happen. And uh, we got into some stuff. Uh, she's divorced. Her ex-husband told her that she wasn't going to be shit without him. You know, the, the things that people say when they want to wound you out in their exit interview. And I said, look, you've already proven him wrong by starting a business and supporting yourself and two kids. So you really can crank it up and we made some uh, adjustments and i got an email because i'm leaving the gym because it's been uh it's been a long week and uh she implemented one strategy because of some things we had to create she didn't have a few months ago and she implemented one strategy and she made on a slow sunday Spring day, she made 10 grand. She was blown away. And out of that 10 grand, she's taken eight home. And it, it got me to thinking. When I was a bum, I didn't think I was worth X amount of dollars. And if you cannot see that money in your mind long before it arrives in your wallet, in your bank account, it's not coming. I don't care what you do. I don't care how many resources you have. I don't care what goes down. It is not coming. And that was the breakthrough because, you know, I got the email and she was just like blown away. And it was something that she could have, you know, have done if she had valued her contributions to her business. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy because when people get those kind of results, they keep coming back. But for you, do you think that you're worth $100,000 net income per year? Do you think you're worth $500,000 net income per year? Do you think you're worth $1 million net income per year? Do you actually believe that to the bone marrow? Now, believing it, and having it enter your life are two different concepts and two separate time points. But you must believe it, feel it, or have a strong notion, or it's not coming. It's just not coming. So this is what I call mental money. I had this mantra that I was saying when I was a bum that, and, and the threshold was so low, because <clears throat> I was so broke, I wasn't asking for much. It's like if I could just make $1,500 per week, I would be so happy. 
you know, $1,500 per week. You know what that is? That's only 72 grand a year. And I wasn't breaking it down by net. I was breaking it down by gross, which is dangerous. Because you can get that $1,500 per week, but only two to three or $400 is yours. I have seen so many people build businesses like that where the monthly gross is awesome. Well, yeah, you know, I make 30,000, I make 50,000, I make 100,000 per month. But what is the net? What is the stuff that you can fold up and put in your wallet? What is that point? I would rather make $20,000 a month and bring home 15, 18 than to make 100,000 a month and bring home 10. Because if you're playing the resale game, race to the bottom, that's pretty much what's happening across many sectors. I have uh, seen a lot of people jump because I've got one client doing eBay and you know I was like, okay, I'll help you. I'll give you all the things that I remember. And already, uh, I haven't done eBay myself for my business in years, but the fees are incredible. They're, I mean, it's about 30% when you factor in a lot of stuff. And shipping is a trip. But with um, dealing with these people and looking at all these businesses, I see a common core. Everyone that I consult with, we set income goals. We set high income goals. That's part of my value to you as a consultant. If I can't help you make more money, you don't need to hire me. That's just that simple. I mean, that's one of the things I love about what you know the thing I do. If I don't get results, I don't get paid. I think that's eminently fair. People, you know, they don't get results, they don't come back. I think that's fair. That makes sense. But with mental money, you have got to adjust your expectations because, like I said, everyone that I consult with, we set income goals, high income goals. Person who's doing eBay um, has another business, wanted to do eBay, helped him do eBay, got hit with, um, I think, a $5,000 limit per month, 200 items, I believe, something like that. And immediately filled that limit up and was just stuck. And I said, well, open up another eBay ID. Now, I don't know if this is going to work for everyone, but it worked for him. He opened up six other IDs and they all gave him $5,000 limits. So effectively across six IDs, he has $30,000 worth of selling limits. And he's selling that much. And he has the headaches of selling that much. This is an established business. This is not a newbie. Uh, most of my more successful clients have established businesses because you know I charge 450 an hour and I'm gonna raise that if you know you're just starting out it's not for you it really isn't but we we set a very high income goal for his business of hundred and fifty thousand dollars per month gross sales with a 38 percent margin that's what we're shooting for and this is a written goal he almost nailed it after two months. Whereas before me, he was doing 60,000. So understand, as uh, I hashed it out with my client today, we talked about mental money and I had her redo her goals. I had her redo everything because uh, like I said, her business model is freaking awesome. And I think that she can turn her business to a seven figure business and still work from home. That's how freaking awesome her business model is. And no, I don't tell my clients business models. Everyone's like, what is it? What is it? You, you, people, people, you gotta stop doing that. Stop looking at what the fuck someone else is doing and do your own damn thing. I had to say that because I, you know, I wanna get those inboxes and it's like, what are they doing? I just tell me, you know, I'm not gonna look for your own shit. Build your own shit. It, it's harder, yes. It, it's more stressful, yes. But the rewards, I mean, I'll tell you, I sell digital products. I have no inventory cost. I have no product cost. I have, I have none of that. So I don't have to do a lot per month to make a livable income because I don't have crazy overhead that you can have. And a lot of resellers are giving it to crazy overhead.
because they have to buy so much to keep their sales through rate higher. And that's a problem. That's a problem because as we go forward, and you can go ahead and stick a pin in this video, as we go forward and we move to 2020, it's 2014 right now, the e-commerce space is gonna be so crowded. You're gonna see an avalanche of people running into that space because they will not be able to find jobs. They will not be able to get a job that's gonna pay what I call a living wage. And a living wage for me is 75,000 to 250,000 per year. That's a living wage to me. Because you're making 40, 50 Gs a year. In many cities, you're struggling. 50 Gs a year, you're struggling. Because you're gonna lose 12 to 18 grand on taxes off the top. So that's gonna leave you <laughs> <laughs> 38 or 32 grand take home pay a roughly 2500 to um, maybe three grand a month if you're lucky just go ahead and crank it down to 25 and then you have health insurance all these other things so your take home pay could be literally on 50 G's a year 2000 a month 2300 a month or, or, or less that I mean I mean, in the hood, rent's 550 in some places. You do the math. It's, it's, it's struggling wages. It's not what it is. There's a lot of people making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year still living at home. Because it's not enough money with their student loan debt to escape the household. It's not enough money. But and the, the space is going to be really, really crowded. It's going to be very, very crowded because... People are going to become entrepreneurs, hustlers, uh, forward-thinking, progressive business people. Not because they want to; they're gonna have. They're gonna do it because they must. And there's a difference between doing it because you want to and doing it because you must. As someone said, brassy talk. That chick that wants to be a prostitute because she likes a lot of sex versus that chick who's a prostitute because she's got to feed her 2.5 kids. It's a big difference. It's a huge difference. And there are many people, female and male, who are prostituting themselves, doing stuff they cannot stand. Hate going to work. Because if you go to work, you do something you don't like doing, you are miserable, you're a whore. I mean, a lot of folks, are like, you are a whore on the whole stroll. Because you've prostituted your best thing, you and your time, for something you can't stand. To me, that's a whore. And a lot of people are going to be really upset with that. But think about it. If you go to a job every day that leaves you depleted, you hate to go, you hit your alarm clock, not once, not twice, not four times, but six or seven times because you don't want to fucking go to that job, you're whoring yourself out. And then this comes back to mental money. If you cannot see the value in you, why should anyone else see that value? Why should anyone else believe in you? Everything, every problem you have starts internally. I know many people, it's like the economy, I'm black, I'm a woman, I'm old. No, no. It is how you think that is the problem. That is the problem. How you think, how you process stuff. That is the problem. Not your age, not your sex, not your race, not your religion. It's how you process stuff. If you do not get to the point where you can look in the mirror and say, I am worth $1 million net income. I must increase my value to society for society to say, here you are. If you can't say that with a straight face, uh, someone recently, and I had to actually say, because she wants to move. And when I have people do their goals, we do lifestyle goals first. Uh, the whole deal is to get your business to integrate into your life and not to get your life to integrate into your business, which can work out, but it can be very stressful because if you're going to start a business, Start one that suits your lifestyle versus just starting one to get money. Even if that means making less money than you can. This uh, writing, content, publishing, media thing, 
is far less money than I was making in the storage auction business. However, I have 90% more free time than I did when I was in the storage auction. I mean, when you think about that. I mean, a real hard day, and the hard days are coming, I'll probably be working four to six hours a day because of this new program that kicks off. That's going to be long days for me. And, you know, factor in the gym and other stuff. You know, it's not going to be 12, 20 hour days. I, I've actually made a promise to myself I wasn't doing that anymore because it, it's not required. It, it's just simply not required anymore. It's about processes. It's about leveraging. It's about using technology. There's just many things that I don't have to do anymore because of all the wonderful things that are out there to make life easier for me, for you, for anyone else that want to use these tools. So, understand, if you want to make more money, you must get your mental money mindset together. I don't care if you have to say it a hundred times before you get up off the bed. You've got to say it. It's like, I am worth X amount of dollars. You have to convince yourself that you are worth that money before someone else will pay you that money. I mean, let's just really talk about it. Let's take Porsche. And by the way, they have a waiting list for a lot of their products. A waiting list. And nothing they sell is cheap. Nothing. And let's talk about this because this is about mental money. Porsche and BMW and Mercedes and Rolls Royce, they have created, their founders have created mental money and a certain level of prestige and exclusivity that will compel someone to pay five hundred thousand dollars for one of their products and wait for it pay in advance and wait for it so i want you to think about that this is happening right now there is somebody in the world who's plugging down four hundred thousand five hundred thousand or a million dollars for a porsche or a ferrari or something and they're going to have to wait for it Let's just keep it unvarnished. Let's just keep it very plain. That car did not cost that much money to build. They didn't double their money. They didn't triple their money. God Googled their money. I mean, it, it, but once again, it goes to mental money. They believe that that product is worth it and they've convinced millions of people around the world that those products are worth that money. You have got to do that to yourself. You, anyone. I, I mean, if you want to make six figures net, just like what, uh, about $8,000 a month. Yeah, $8,000 is change per month. Take home pay. That's uh, six figures net. I like to speak in terms of net because when someone says, hey, the business did 30 million, I am not impressed until I know the net. Because I know a business could do 30 million, but had expenses of 40. Happens all the time. So, what do you want to be your mental money? What, what, what is your number? What is your number? What, what do you, where do you want to be? Because money does not buy happiness, but it solves many problems. Like, where are you going to live? Where are your kids are going to school? How much crime are you have to deal with? Are you able to afford those delicious, fresh vegetables for your kids and yourself? Can you buy those prime choice cuts of meat? Can you uh, afford health insurance? Can you wor not worry about, damn, are the lights going to get cut off? I mean, this is some very real stuff, and these are some very real issues that many people are facing every day. Mental money. You have to get your mental money up before the physical money will match your, your expectations. If you are broke, if you are impoverished, if you're living in mental poverty, until you change your mindset, that will be a continuum in your life. It's not gonna change, it's not gonna get any better, it's actually going to get worse. Because you've not ever thought about what is your worth? Because when you start talking about how much money you are worth, people get very weird. Well, it's not about the money. 
It's about helping people. It's about sharing. I say this. If you had a secret or a, or a method to make a lot of money, most people are going to pour the shit out of that method before they go ahead and give it to someone else. They may at some point, hey, like the Gates and the Warren Buffets of the world, set up these foundations to give that money away, which is very admirable. But you must get the money first before you can give it away. If you are giving away money before you can take care of yourself and your family, you're an idiot. You're just an idiot because how can you help someone else fix their house when your shit's on fire? And there are many people out there donating money, helping out people, and they can't even pay their own damn bills. To me, that is foolish. It's not selfish to make sure that you and yours are straight before you help someone else. I mean, that is what I call the poverty prosperity ministry. Ministry. It's just, no, it's not about money. It's about, no, it's about money. Money gives you options. Option gives you power. As long as you are powerless, you will forever be a slave to the matrix. And one of the things that keeps you a slave to the matrix is you have to do things you don't want to do to earn money to live in a place you may not even like. When you really think about that, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of nuts. It's kind of why the hell am I doing this stuff when I have options, but most people don't think they have options. One of my favorite expressions, uh, I heard it from a guy in the pizzeria years ago, I'd rather uh, beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. I love that. I love it because there are many people who are begging for permission to be successful. They're literally begging someone to be successful versus just saying, I'm going to be successful. Fuck you if you don't like it. I'm going to build whatever I want to build. I'm going to build this company. I'm going to write this book. I'm going to go to the North Shore of Hawaii and save the whales. Many people want to do these things, but they feel that they must somehow be given permission to go forward. That's really saying that you want someone's stamp of approval on your ass. It's like you pull down your pants. It's like, please don't let me get the spanking. Please don't let me get the spanking. Let me get the stamp. Oh, I got a stamp of approval. I got a stamp of approval. I got a stamp of approval. Oh, I'm a valuable person because someone gave me a stamp of approval. If that's you, just go kill yourself. Because you are a slave to the expectations of other people of what you should be versus who you really are. I get a lot of flack about the profanity and the lack of professionalism and uh, I never claim to be a professional. There is not one video out of 850 that you can see and the other 250 that I have hidden where I say, well, I'm a professional. No, I'm not a professional. I am a free man. <laughs> That's what I am. And with freedom comes a lot of fucking options. Uh, this message isn't for everyone. It's not for everyone. If you are watching this video and you're going, mm, 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 no, I don't like this, turn it off. There's someone here on YouTube that will give you a message that you can digest that's for you. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean the information is bad. It just means it's not for you. That's a lesson I had to learn. I'll watch videos and I'm like, ah, I don't like it. I don't leave hate comments. I don't even leave a dislike. I go, oh, I don't like it. And I move on. <laughs> I move on. There are many people that, due to their own inferiority complex, will try to change you and your message and what you're doing so they can feel better about them themselves. So they can feel better about their low expectation having ass. They can feel better about not taking any risk. They can feel better about being a scared little bitch shaking in the boots of life like some frightened animal that just got whipped by some hunter. They, it, I mean, it, it's really, really sad because one thing I've learned about this channel is I piss off a lot of people. And at first, I thought it was like, well, you know, I'm saying things about certain demographics. And then later on, it didn't hit me. One of my mentors said, dude, 
you are intimidating people and people are jealous. And I was like, I just have a YouTube channel. It's not like I'm famous. He said, no, no, you don't understand. You actually did something. I remember when you started. I remember when you put your YouTube videos on Facebook and you did not stop. Do you know how many people would have stopped long before now? And I was like, I have no clue. He said, most. He said, that's why people aren't successful. They stop. They start and then they stop because of other people's advice that, hey, you know, this isn't profitable. I see it in the comments all the time. Uh, one person is like, you know, my husband doesn't like me listening to you. My wife doesn't like me listening to you. My father doesn't like me listening to you. My mother doesn't like me listening to you. And then when I peel back the layers and I ask them a question, is your mother, father, husband, whoever, fill in the blank, are these people successful by any measure? The question is always no. I mean, the answer is always no. It's like, nope, nope, nope. I mean, one person told me his mother, who was talking smack, had been unemployed for two years. Uh, another person, father, he's an alcoholic and has never been able to hold a job for more than six months to 18, six to 18 months. That was it before they got rid of it. And these are the people who are saying, mm-mm. Nah. Mm -mm. No, no, don't listen to him. No, don't listen to him. He's just some kind of hustler. He just wants your money. He's not trying to help you. And to a degree, I do want your money. I'll say that with all kind of mental money, mental money. If I can't say, look you in the eye and say, yeah, I want your money, then there's a problem with what I'm selling. If I have to like, well, you know, if you kind of sort of want to give me some, if I can't ask you for the money, if I don't feel that my shit is worth the money, there's a problem. There's a big problem. It's huge. It's a huge problem. And I made the decision because one of the things I can't stand is when I go to a website and I'm looking for something and I can't see the price. I'll read the copy. But if the price is hidden, I usually just go away. Because if I have to work to see how much something costs, I, I immediately lose interest. And for me, there's some people that that type of sales pitch works on. I, I'm not going to hate it. But for me, it doesn't work. It actually turns me off. And therefore, I don't run my business like that. I will tell you straight up, this is the price. This is what it's going to cost. And no, I'm not going to give a discount on this and just move on because what I have found to be very very interesting I have more consults at 450 than I did when I was at $30 per hour in 2000 early 2010 I was uh, at 30 bucks an hour I have more consults at 450 than I did at four at 30 bucks I mean I, I look back and I'm like this is kind of crazy it's kind of crazy, but what it, what happened is I made myself more valuable. I kept doing it. I kept raising the price. And there are some people that laugh because uh, I don't see those comments anymore. Because someone said, hey, "I'll get your book when it, you lower the price." It took three and a half years for the price to be lowered. But at that point, the storage auction thing—it's not over, but the craze is over. Uh, it's on its last legs. I don't watch Storage Wars, Auction Hunters. I don't know how long those shows are going to be on. But essentially, I planned for my book to be obsolete. Because I knew it was coming. It had a life cycle. I knew it had a life cycle. It was longer than I thought it was going to be, but it was longer. And that's why I have crafted myself, crafted my message. And the thing is about helping people start businesses is a passion of mine. I know what it's like to be ass out. I know what it's like to not have any money. I know what it's like to have people laugh at you because you like, I have a dream. People just like laugh. I mean, my old mother did that shit to me. It was like when we had the reality show and I went to visit her and I was talking about it. And she's like, they're going to put you on television. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And you just have to really, really get your mind right and just deal with that stuff. Because when people are laughing at you and when they're pointing fingers and when they're just trying to not step on your dreams they're, they're sticking dynamite in there with some blasting caps on your dream what they're really trying to do is create a distraction because you just made them realize that they didn't have the courage to chase their own shit 
that's what's happening um, if you have a lot of hate if you have a lot of people who are distractors you have a lot of people talking junk about you you my friend are on the right path the more dissension that you have going on in your life the more and hate and all this other stuff you are on the right path because you have stirred up a lot of energy you have done something you've made a decision you've taken an action and you have created a lot of act of energy disruption you have I mean seriously you're on the right path if you're catching hell right now if uh, you it looks bleak it looks dark it looks kind of crazy you're on the right path because before you can reinvent yourself do something different you have to destroy your old self and it's going to be painful uh, it's going to be very painful. It's going to be, you're going to lose some friends. You're going to lose uh, some family members. You're, some friendships you thought were solid, you're going to find out they're not solid. And then people that you never thought that much of will support the shit out of you and will surprise you and make you uh, humble. They will humble you because you never knew they cared that much. You're going to find out who you are and who's in your life and who is not in your life. This stuff is going to happen because when you take that action, when you make those decisions, amazing things begin to happen. When If you can just hold on to that bucking bronco of disruption and pain and chaos, if you can just hold on, just hold on and just deal with the storm and the fury of the storm, you get through that where the sun starts peeking out of those dark clouds and the rain stops, you'll start looking around and realize you're in a new land. You'll look down and say, oh, I've got a new body. I've got a new mindset. I've got a new, I got new swag. I've got new mojo. When that stuff happens, you be like, damn. And you're just going to have to deal with the fact that there are many people who are not coming on this journey with you. It, it may be your father. It may be your mother. It may be um, people that you really care about. They're not coming on the journey with you. Just because you care about someone doesn't mean they care about you. You got to let that go. It's like, oh, I love him. I loved her. So, <laughs> did they ever show you any action that they really loved you? If the action does not match the words, there you have your truth for that particular situation. Action is the greatest truth there is. And that's what I'm saying. You know, uh, I've had a lot of people who I get so many emails of people who are going through hell. I got a uh, message from someone that I hadn't heard from. Uh, he lost his son. I didn't know that. And he just went in hibernation for about a year. There's a lot of people in pain and you don't know what these folks are going through because many people don't know who they're dealing with. And this is why I'm saying if you're going through hell and you've got all this stuff going on and this disruption and this madness, be grateful because you're finding out the true value of your life, the true value of your relationships, the true value of your family, your friends, your circle. You're finding out the true value. It is best to find this stuff out when there's no dire emergency than to find out when you really need people. Because I worked in the hospital. I have seen this one woman, I'll never forget her. Uh, she had breast cancer. She told her husband that she was going to have to cut off her breast. He divorced her. She made it. You know, she had the radical mastectomy. Dude divorced her. I can't even imagine the horror of something like that happening. You're sitting there worried about your life, scared shitless, and the person that stood before you and family and God and said, until death do us part, dipped out before treatment even began. I mean, she just, I mean, the woman just broke down in the lab one day. I mean, she just broke down. It was a weekend, and I, I saw her over in the MOB. And it, I mean, she just, like, just broke down. And I, I had compassion and empathy. I mean, I was just kind of stunned of uh, the lack of humanity in that situation. And he, he left her. He left her. I mean, you got to deal with the devastation of illness and you have to deal with the devastation of someone that you love leaving you high and dry and cold. I, I, I just remember that woman because um, she was she was transformed. She, uh, as far as I know, she's still here. She did beat it because they got to it before it spread. 
but um, she was definitely depressed, definitely depressed. And I've seen this, just because you have family does not mean they're gonna show up. Just because you have a husband and a wife doesn't mean they're gonna show up, which goes back to why you need to get your mental money together now. Because mental money is a, is a resource. You can get stuff, all kinds of stuff. And I'm gonna discuss this in the Hustler uh, Mastermind because one of the things that I'm gonna do with that group is I'm gonna give you the full skinny of what I do to be successful. And it's gonna be very unorthodox. It's gonna have a lot of esoteric stuff in it, but it works for me and maybe it'll work for you. Could work for you. But at some point you have got to say, I'm worth it, claim it, and don't ever, don't ever say, oh, that goes too big. Uh, that's too, why are you putting the ceiling on your ambition? Where does that come from? Where does that come from? A ceiling on your ambition. People do it every day. So just uh, some food for thought, just something for you to think about and to realize the mental money snapshot will have to happen before you log into your checking account and see the money there. It could be weeks, months, or years, but you must see that money in your mind before it will come up in physical manifestation. You gotta see it, you gotta see it, and more importantly than seeing it, you must take action to make it happen. If you wanna earn $10 million in your lifetime selling two and three dollar items and only selling 50 a month is not gonna get it. You gotta up your scale. It's like, okay, if I wanna make 10 million, then I'm selling this dollar product, I need to sell millions of them. What do, how can I scale it up? Can I get the distribution? I mean, you've got to ask yourself those questions because once you, and this is a big thing I deal with all my consulting clients, is infrastructure. If your infrastructure is solid, meaning you can't scale it up, how much money you make is going to just reach a ceiling and it's just going to stay there. Everyone wants to work from home. Everyone wants to make a million bucks. Uh, there's going to be a select group of people that can do it. Most can't most are not gonna be able to do it. You'll be able to do it if you expand and come out of the house. And this is where mental money and creating a lifestyle of intent and design comes into play. So, okay, say you gotta get a warehouse. Say you got 2.5 kids. Well, it's your warehouse, right? What you can do is build out a section and have an area for them to play in and hire a nanny or someone to come to work with you so your kids are with you and you look at them all the time. You'll work, do some work, and then you go check in and just walk around the corner to the area and check on your kids you they're with you every day you you put them in your car seats and you take them to work with you every day and then you create something that's very very powerful they get to see you happy and they get to be with you and they get to see you building something kids do what you do what you say don't mean shit what you say means nothing what you do is everything so if they see you doing that you give them a greater legacy than you ever know. Ever know. So, understand. Get your mental money up to get your physical money into your life. Alright, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.